Hello, ladies. How are you? I am coming back for live training this morning, and I hope that the comments work. So once I start getting some eyes watching the training today, please comment in the in the chat box. And I'm going to, if it hopefully works, if not, we're just going to move forward with it anyway. So we're not waiting anymore. This is also why I'm moving over to the Zoom platform. <laughs> oh yes, it's working. Thank you, Nikki, for commenting and Jules for commenting before when it wasn't working. I really appreciate you ladies being here. So today we're gonna chat about the customer journey, understanding the customer journey, building out your customer journey. And just so you know, it takes time and that's okay. Then I'm gonna give you a bunch of really great questions that you can include when building your customer journey, as well as building your copy for your website, your social media, your sales pages. And then we're going to finish off on building your offer because you'll notice that the questions I give you will help you to modify your offer and build a better offer and help you to connect with your audience. Okay. So, Oh, Nikki says she needs this. Yes, this is awesome. I love this topic. And just so you know, I'm not perfect at it either. I am always learning. This takes practice. So building out your customer journey takes time and practice, especially when building your copy. So you're, I'm always using these questions and looking at this question so that I become better and working with copywriters, taking copyright courses, and it's simple, but we have to work our brain in a special way in order to think in this way. So you'll see. Okay. So starting out, we're going to chat about customer journey. So I really want you to think about, and as always, I give you a lot of exercises to do on your own in these little trainings. So if you want to go away after this mini training this morning and dig deeper into the questions I ask you, it's probably a great idea. Um, I literally spend hours doing it. I have a specific book just for this topic of building out my copy, understanding my clients and building my offers. It's probably here, but it literally just looks like this. And I just am always writing in it. It helps me to also get content for social. So with your customer journey, I want you to ask yourself, where are my customers coming in from? Let me explain in my in my business structure, my clients can be coming in from Instagram. They can be coming in from a one-on-one -on -one call. They can be coming in from an opt-in. And if you don't know what an opt-in is, because I do get a lot of questions on this, an opt-in is a free download. It could be a webinar, a PDF, or you know, a meditation, something, an audio file or presentation that they give you their email to download. So it normally works to have a one or two um, downloads. You can always be changing these as well. You don't necessarily need to, don't complicate it for yourself. If you do not have an opt-in right now, I highly recommend it. Just start with one. Start with one thing that really hits your target demographic and we're gonna go into questions if you're not sure what that might be to help you to build your opt-in. People can also come from in from events whether they are free or paid, they can come in from your newsletter sign up on your website. So I really want you to write out all of the different ways people can come into your business. This is important to know because then you can start better understanding their customer journey. So if come, someone comes in from an event, what is their experience? If someone comes in from the Facebook group, what is their experience? If someone comes in from a newsletter or opt-in or you know just the newsletter sign up on your website what is their experience and what experience do you want them to have so this is where you also have to be gentle with yourself because people can come in in many different ways and continuing to expand and automate this customer journey is a process so for example this week i'm chatting with one of the girls that works with me about our customer journey so when someone comes in through our Yay. newsletter sign up, what email are they getting? What experience are they having? So then you can start to add in emails 
and automations. And let me explain what that is in case this is new to you so that you can start to increase the customer journey. An automation is an automatic email sequence that you can set up that people can get when they enter your mailing list. So it triggers in the back end. So if you're using MailChimp or whatever email platform you're using, Kajabi, ConvertKit, you can set it up so that when they join your mailing list, they get a sequence of emails and it doesn't have to be annoying. It doesn't have to be, you know, 15 emails in 15 days straight, but you can really start to craft what the customer journey looks like. But in order to understand the customer journey and perfect your customer journey and also work on automation to make your job a lot easier, you have to know where they're coming in from. So that's the number one question. Where are they coming in from? So I want you to write out every place that they're coming in from. And then what is their experience and customer journey is the second question. And then the third question is what can I automate and or add in order to make their customer experience better? Now, this doesn't just have to be automation in email forms. It can also be DMs in Instagram. You know, thanks for the follow. This can be done video or audio. And I still like to streamline things as a business and as the business owner, you still want to outsource and streamline as much as possible. So maybe you just make one audio or one video that you can send to multiple people to welcome them into your community. You can also send handwritten thank you cards, but you can outsource that. So you can outsource that to someone to write a handwritten thank you card once they join as a client or as part of your community. Does that make sense? Okay. I want to go into the questions for you to ask. We do have a, um, I may be wrong. However, I've seen this function with friends businesses and it feels like it degrades the quality of business, which is going to be required in this new time. Can you explain that a little bit more grace? What part degrades the relationship? I think there's definitely a way to be, to not ignoring the customer journey is not an option, <laughs> but we can definitely to Grace's point, there are different ways to do that. And that actually, that question, Grace leads us really well into the questions that I'm going to go over because you don't want to be a super aggressive salesperson. You want to be genuine and authentic automated emails. Yes. Automated emails can be very, um, salesy and very yucky and cheesy. Yes, <laughs> is a question. So it takes a lot of intention to create automated emails in a way. So often cheesy automated emails are some, some people might just make way too many and they may be super cheesy when they send them. So what I would recommend if you're worried about getting cheesy is really focusing on your copy. And we're gonna go over some of those questions as well as creating it to be a little bit more personal and not doing as many. So maybe you do a friendly video when someone signs up. It also depends how they're entering. So back to the first question, how are they entering your business and your consumer or customer experience? If they are entering via a challenge or an opt-in, you have a different relationship with them versus if they're coming in just via a newsletter, you know, they're just entering their email at the bottom of your footer on your website. So if they're just entering your email, a friendly like, hey, welcome to the community. This is how to use our community. Maybe all that you want and all that you need. But if they're entering via a challenge or an opt-in, you already know something about them and something that they're interested in. You may be able to give them more value and or continue to build that relationship. So when going into these questions, you'll notice that being authentic is really important as our questions and concerns are also coming up. Making sure that you are building relationship, that you are trying to understand your customer and that you want to provide them value and what's important to them. It 
your automation and your customer journey should enhance their experience, not take away from their experience. And it has both capabilities. So you just have to pay attention to how you're engaging in those behaviors and patterns so that you can increase it. The other thing I want you to know is it's okay. You're not going to be a fit for everyone. If someone unsubscribes and if someone doesn't want to be in your community or get the information that you're providing, that is okay. You can just let them go and um, and let them about their way. And that is totally cool. But intention is really important to have intention behind your customer journey so that you can be intentional with your relationships and how you want to move forward. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You can write them down or watch this video back so that you can start to integrate them into your content, your consumer and customer journey, as well as your copy on your sales pages, your opt-in, your websites. So what I want you to think about, if you have a program or business already and or want to create one, I need you to ask yourself, why are you creating or have you created this program? So what, what is it for? Money aside, what are you hoping to do with this program and why did you create it? What did you see a need in the market and why did you create it? Number two, what are the main benefits your clients or whoever the program is for will receive from this program? So what are you hoping the results that they will get and the benefits they will get from doing your offer, your program, your course, whatever it is that you're offering? So just insert your product or offering here. Number three. Are what are your clients three biggest challenges okay what why haven't they accomplished their current goals what is getting in their way what are their fears and what is preventing them from getting what they want that hopefully your program is giving them you'll start to see we're gonna keep diving deeper into this but it's really important to understand your client's pain points. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep asking the questions and then I'm gonna give you another exercise along with that. So if I forget, whoever is watching, just give me a little, hey, give us the other exercise. Okay, your next question number four is what are your client's biggest fears around this area of their life? Again, you can see understanding people's fears, needs and wants is really important. You want your product or offering to be a solution to something going on in their life. Number five, what is your client's biggest frustrations? This might connect as well to challenges. You can see how these three questions are quite similar. However, we ask them in a slightly different way because your answer and your thought process might change. Number six is what will they gain after doing this program? Again, coming back to the results. Number seven, what is your proof and why should they listen to you? Who are you and why did you put together this program? Number eight, who is this program for? So this is really understanding your client demographic, who is your ideal consumer and understanding the avatar of your current client. If you don't know the answer to that, I'm writing this down. I'm gonna give you your two exercises at the end. Then going into who doesn't need this program. It's good to know who needs it and who doesn't need it. This will highlight what qualities and criteria and needs people need, people want and need in order to use your program. Then we're going to go into number 10. What valuable information can you give away? And usually it's most of it. You want to be giving, if you go back to Gary V you also need to always be giving value, really looking at how can I help? How can I give to this person? Then we're going to go into question 11. Why won't people buy? What will their objections be? So you want to be thinking ahead as to what will some people's objections be so you can answer these objections before and throughout your customer journey. They're usually price, time, 
But again, depending on your product or service, you want to understand what their objections are. Then you want to go into number 12. What is the dream for both you and your client? And then lastly here, we want to go into what is the nightmare or the greatest pain for both you and your client in building out this program and giving an offer. So I want you to dive deep into those questions because those questions are going to help you with your copy, with your content on your website, your social media and your sales pages. But I'm going to give you your two additional exercises right now. And that is, I want you to write a line in the on the page and i want you to separate it into two columns one column is really understanding the pain points and challenges of your customer knowing what keeps them up at night is a really great question to ask and to ask them what are you currently worried about what are your current challenges what are you currently googling <laughs> what are you wanting to find answers to that you can or cannot find very easily? And that's understanding their pain points. And then I want you in the other column to understand what are their joys? What are their dreams and desires? And so really understanding your cu customer will help you. Now, here's the link that a lot of people miss it's always coming back to this. So when building out your content on social media, on your website, it's always asking yourself this question so it's obvious to them. Because even though it is obvious to you what your offer and what your program or whatever you're trying to share, it's obvious to you what it does and how it will benefit them, but it's not obvious to the person reading it and on the other side. So let me give you an example. And this, I've had these conversations with my mentors and, and colleagues and other entrepreneurs many times. When you're dealing in the realm of mindset and personal growth and personal development, this is often really difficult because people may not be looking for a better mindset. Is this making sense? They're looking for less stress, less anxiety. What are they Googling? What are their pain points? Their pain points in their Google is, you know, how do I feel less frustrated at my kids? How do I stop yelling at my husband maybe? <laughs> so looking at it from the consumer side so that when you're building your offer, and you're communicating to your client, you're coming at it from, this is what I have to offer you, and this is how it can help you, because I know these are some of the things that are currently challenging you. So communicating that so they are following you throughout the customer and sales process. So you can see how understanding your customer journey nicely leads into your copy, and building an offer and your sales process. I do have some questions coming in. So we need to be careful at this time. Advertising has historically preyed upon people's fears and insecurities, and we need to move in a different direction. That's totally true. It does prey on people's fears and insecurities. However, you still have to understand what their fears and insecurities are to communicate to them. You don't have to communicate to them. And we can see the shift now, which I totally agree. And as a business owner and or working for yourself or somebody else, we have to understand what their fears are to know if we are giving them a solution. It does not mean that within our copy, we have to say, this is your only solution. And you know we know that you are struggling and you have to do something about it you can still be very loving and kind within your copy and not give them the same experience of you know harping on their fears and insecurities and having this lack and really aggressive approach so there is definitely a different way but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't understand their fears because your fears are going to help you understanding their fears and insecurities will help you to develop products and or offers that will authentically help them. 
We want to, at the end of the day, we want to provide value and help our clients and customers to make sure that we're making a difference. And if that's your mission, and that most of the best businesses truly make a difference and help people through challenging times, whatever that is, monetary, you know, we have worked with money coaches and lots of people within the ladies community and within all of our workshops, we're trying to provide value to help you in some area of your life, money, sex, relationships, and as well, which is why we're doing these trainings so that we can, I can share with you what I know and what I've learned over time. So understanding, I think the understanding the sensitivity also comes with practice and practicing writing out your copy and getting other people to review that. And you want to make them feel still uplifted and hopeful when they're reading your copy, but you want to be talking to them as if you know them so that when they read your copy, they look at your copy and in an ideal world, they're like, girl, she knows me. That's totally me. She's talking to me. And I want to know more about what she's saying. And I want to listen and I want to get these tips and this value that she's providing. So you want them to say, so that's why you also want to know your avatar. Who are you talking to? And this links really nicely to the pain points. Who are you talking to? What are their pain points? So that when you're communicating with them, they're saying, she knows me. She got, she's got me. Is she in my head? We've all read those social media posts, anything. And here's the tip also. It doesn't always have to come from a sales place. You don't have to be knowing their fears and interacting with their fears to make a sale. You can be giving them. And that's why one of the questions I gave you was what can you give them for free? You can say, you know, if you look on my social media as well, um, if you follow me, it's I A M Vanessa O. You can see I try to do videos of, you know, are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling overwhelmed? You know, are you having fights with your boyfriend or any challenges with your partners? Here are some tips and solutions to help you. But people have to know what are you telling them and why is it important to them? It's important to them because it can help them with an area in their life. And if it's not for them, and if they aren't resonating with your message, maybe they're not having that challenge, that's okay. Then they're not your avatar. But as a business owner and providing value and or working for a business, again, they're interchangeable, so I don't want anyone to feel left out. You can, it's important for you to still understand who are you talking to? What are they living in right now? And how can you give them a solution, free, paid, however you wanna do that? that's where you need to take an additional step back and dig deeper into the customer journey and customer experience. Is all of this making sense, ladies? We do have some um, questions and I know copy, this kind of integrates into sales. It can be really uncomfortable. Um, that's why I think it's so important for us to have these conversations, for you to express your concerns and hesitations because there's some mindset behind it as well as how do we be better at communicating with our clients, providing offers, because the worst thing I would want to see is you work so hard on building an offer and or trying to connect with your customer and then building something that they don't even buy and they don't even use and find value from. So doing the legwork, to really make sure you're connecting and you're understanding who they are is so important because then now's how you build an offer. You, when I work with my clients and they don't know what to do, then I just get them to research, ask, interview their clients. What do you want? What do you need? What are your challenges? Because then you can, excuse me, decide is my, are my skills and expertise and my experience, can I share anything to help them through this time? So Janet says, this is great. Okay, good. I'm glad this is helpful for you. I do this all the time. 
I am always trying to write out, and you'll see even within TLC, and I have said this to you before, I'm always asking you ladies questions. I wanna know, where are you at right now? What's happening with you, your life, your mind? Because all we know is our experience, and that's okay. It doesn't make your experience wrong. We just wanna know and understand, especially in business, how can we better understand everybody else's experience, know what it's like for them, what are their challenges, what's keeping them up at night, and can we help them? So it goes back to the very simple structure, which we've talked about so many times, of where are they at now, which is maybe their pain points and their fears and insecurities, but where do they want to go? And are we a solution to that? So how do we effectively communicate if we are a solution? and what results they will get from working with you so that they can make a decision if you are the right person for them to help them along this journey. So that hopefully they can get there faster, cheaper, and more painless than, than you did based on your experience and what you've learned because you wanna help them. You want to come from a place of love and kindness and giving people ease and solutions to their problems and just continue giving value, 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 value. And that's why social media is so awesome right now because you can give free value. And one question as we finish up for the day, because I get this question often and I had this question for my mentors as well when building my offers. So just know your offers are always gonna be evolving and changing. Also know, I always asked, I go, but how do you know what you should be giving away for free and what you should be selling, right? Is this a question that you ladies have too? I'm like, there's just so much content and we wanna be giving things away for free. We want to be giving people a good experience and giving value. If you're anything like me, I'm always like, here, here's information. And so it's really important to know, and my mentors all say this to me, Vanessa, if someone were to look at all of my YouTube videos, all of my free content, all of my social media, they would probably get most of the information from my course. However, it would be all over the place, right? Your videos are maybe one to five, if it's YouTube, maybe it's 10, 15 minutes. It's not linking everything together. And so knowing that you need to give information to build trust, to, to know if people like your stuff and to for them to know if they want to work with you and they like your approach. But don't be afraid to give away free information because in your course or in your offer, whatever it is, you're going to be putting it together in a different way. Again, that goes back to this customer journey that guides them through, that heals them, that helps them. And you're probably also going to give bonus perks. So I'm actually also developing a course too. Now we're in quarantine. It's so much easier to write. And so within, we're looking at, okay, how can we increase this customer journey? Do I need to give group coaching to help them along? Do we need to give one-on-one -on -one time? Because as people go along in your social media or YouTube, they may not be asking questions and or know to how to apply it in their life. So in your course or in your offer or whatever you do, you're just giving more context and helping them specifically and kind of putting it all together in a nice package and bow for them to move through it easier and faster. So I hope that answers your question. Denise says she's launching, launching a program right now and she's tapping into this. That's great. It's, I actually find this a lot of fun. Like I want to provide value. I want to do this. And like I said, I do this often, you know, every couple of months, or if you're not feeling connected to your community or to your offer, do this again. Did I miss something? This will also become your content for your social media. So if on any day, if you feel stuck and you don't know what to share, again, giving value, you can go back to this list and say, okay, is there something that people are Googling right now and or some pain point that I can help people with? And you go right back to the bare basics of what are their challenges and how can I help them? So I'm gonna 
close up this little training today. I hope this helped you. Such great questions. Thank you, ladies, for engaging. Denise, Janet, Grace, Nikki, Jules. I so appreciate you being here and all the rest of the people that have watched. If you have any more questions, feel free to post in the comments. I'm going to circle back and, um, and answer any questions in the comments that you might have. Please DM me if you need anything, if you have any questions. Just to reiterate, now the trainings, I'm gonna change the format a little bit so that I don't inundate Facebook and I know everyone's going live right now. I'm gonna do a training once a week on Mondays. It'll be an hour. We're gonna move it over to Zoom. So you'll have to register and then you'll get the link and then you just come on to Zoom and we'll be diving into the same sort of content, business, relationships, networking, sales, mindset, and then you can come with your Q&A and we're gonna still have a theme for every training. So you're gonna know what the training is so that you can be prepared when coming in. So I look forward to continuing to work with you ladies. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a fabulous day. Sending you so much love. Bye for now.